To God be the glory, in Jesus' mighty name. And I honor the Lord for each and every one of you. Like I always say, it's an honor to serve you. And we are all coming up higher. So you have to understand that the Lord is teaching each and every one of us. As I'm coming up higher, <laughs> the Lord is encouraging me to basically teach, to come up higher as well. So I thank God for just this dimension of Revelation 4 and 1. So today, I want us to basically uh, look at a scripture that I believe the Father has been really speaking, the Lord Jesus has been trying to manifest, and the cloud of witness um, trying to correct at the same time. And the reason why I use the word trying to correct is because, you know, a lot of times, majority of those in the body, what we tend to do is we tend to believe everything written in the scripture is from the Lord. Yeah, I want to basically emphasize that. Yes, that's what we do. We tend to emphasize that everything written in the scripture is from God. Now, you know, I've always encouraged a lot of people how to read the Bible because reading the Bible is very, very beautiful. But a lot of times, majority of us, what we tend to do is we tend to do research, research in the Bible, you know, on the Internet and things like that. You know, one thing I want you to understand is though the Bible is so beautiful, the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, that is what the wisdom and revelation in what in the knowledge of him. He reveals the Bible. And majority of the time, that's why we have ended up with what? With so many types of Bibles in creation. Because a lot of times, people basically write the Bible based on research rather than revelation. So that is why you can see that the form of the patterns of the world has manifested in Bible in the use of the language that is being what? Written in. So what do I mean by that? First of all, the Bible is written in three dimensions. God said. So in God said, there is what Jesus is saying, and at the same time, in what Holy Ghost is saying. So because God is saying it, what eventually happens? That is the word that we ought to what? Live by. Because in the second dimension of what the what? The patriarchs are saying, some of them, they got it wrong. So you might ask yourself, why would the Father allow mistakes, you know, of the people to be written in the Bible? Very, very good question. The truth of it is, the Bible has is so mysterious that it even reveals the mistakes that people make. Yes, so that you can see it against the Word of God. That when God spoke this, this person went and done this, and eventually this was the consequences of that. So you can see how you understand that sometimes when God speaks, and when you don't do what it tells you to do, there are consequences of that in what? In itself. That is what he showed through the patriarchs. For example, Abraham, leave your father's house. Abraham did not live alone. He took Lot with him. Do you see that dimension? And what eventually happened? Until he separated from Lot, that was when the manifestation of the land came. And not only that in itself. Can you see? Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. You know, look at the, the stars. That's how many your descendants will be. <laughs> but right after that revelation, <laughs> Sarah was like, I don't think God is going to manifest this. Go into my go into my servant right there and do what you need to do because we need a baby. <laughs> do you see that dimension? And Abraham said, all right, I'm going to do just that. And what happened? Ishmael was born. So you can see that that was outside the timing of God and that was not the will of the father. So you can see that Abraham too made a mistake. So the same way the apostles, they made a mistake. So the only set of people in the Bible that did not make a mistake is God the Father, Jesus our Lord, and Holy Ghost. So you can see. So that is why we see with the prophets, when they say God said, then we believe that is God because they are speaking it in what? in Under the instruction or in the instruction of the Father. So everywhere you see God said in the Bible, that is the word of God. But when the patriarchs are actually speaking a word, you have to check with the Father if that is what? The very motive of his will. Amen. Do you see that? So it's a place I've been encouraging that because, for example, we see with Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was writing to each and every one of us and helping us to understand. He says, cast down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Very true. 
Yeah, because God has judged, uh, you know, the imaginations in Genesis 6. In Ezekiel chapter 13, he dealt with imaginations and the prophets were speaking these imaginations. Amen. And for that reason, you can see a lot of people have started to use the word, imagine this, imagine that. You're on the pulpit, they're speaking, imagine this, imagine that. So it is not God who is basically dealing with them. It is the word in which he has spoken that does not return to him void. So every time you use that statement in what? In your messages, in your prophetic words, you are bringing judgment upon yourself. Amen. So that is basically why we have to be careful with what? The Bible. Because what God has already judged, we basically try to do. We stay away from that. <laughs> you see? Because the consequences of it will manifest. So the same way with Apostle Paul, he went on to say, you know, bringing every thought into captivity. If the Father is trying to bring people out of captivity, the ministry of Jesus in Luke chapter 4 was to bring people out of captivity. And Apostle Paul is telling us to take it into captivity. Can you see the dimension of the word of the Father? That is why the Lord is saying, I did not ask you to bring their thoughts into captivity. I'm trying to release them to be able to think like me. Think on these things, Philippians chapter 4. Things that are true. Yes, I don't want to bring them into a captivity where some teachings that they might be teaching might be wrong and eventually leading them into captivity as well. Apostle Paul, you're such a beautiful man and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. So you can see consistently it goes on in the Bible. That is why you've got to understand that you also, you make mistakes too. Because this is why the Father in his infinite mercy, he corrects those mistakes that the apostles and the patriarchs made through you. So if you read Hebrews 11, it says that what? It says that through you, they are made perfect. So because you are Christ, can you see? Now they come to you because you are encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses. They come to you and then they say, hey, hey, uh, you know, we basically wrote this in the Bible. Can you begin to read this chapter? All right. So why am I reading this chapter? All right. So as you begin to read it, then you realize, wow, this verse, this verse, what is happening with this verse? This is contrary to what God is, God has already said in the Bible. So why am I basically meditating on this verse? So in that moment, whoever wrote the book, whether it is Apostle Paul, or Apostle Peter is with you in that moment and is asking you, please, can you help me to correct that? So you can see the beauty that the Bible is still an ongoing revelation because the cloud of witnesses are with you to what? To correct the things that are in there. So now, just because you made, so they made the mistake, they are still correcting through you is the same way that you can make a mistake and somebody comes along and then eventually corrects that. Do you see that dimension? Because I believe recently, you know, I mean, not too, not too long ago, I was sitting down and I believe there was a place that I worshipped before and there was this woman, the Lord basically was helping me to understand, was walking in witchcraft. And, you know, and I was getting this revelation, ah, she might have killed her husband or something like that, you know, and the Lord began to show me. He said, no, that's not what happened because I'm fighting for the widows. Do you see that dimension? So it was a place I had to repent of the Father. Lord, I am sorry. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? So I repent of that publicly. I am sorry for that, you know, because the Father was helping me to understand that, hey, you got that wrong there. So it is a place with you and the apostles at the same time. He can say to you, hey, you got that wrong there too. So for that reason is why the father is consistently as he wants to change it with you. He wants to change the same thing. You know, it's an ongoing process. Amen. So for that reason, I want to get into the text today and we're going to look from the book of James. You know, I don't want to basically push it too long because I'm going to basically help us to understand it in context so that we can we can move on and understand the dimension of this correction. So the Bible says in James chapter two, I'm going to start from verse eight. It says, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and and are convicted by the law as law breakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a law breaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Now, I want to stay with verse what? With verse 10. It says, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Now, 
when I was basically still in religion, they used to tell me that there are 613 laws that have been written in the Bible. Now, it's gone on to be taught that if you break one, you've broken all of it. That is what Apostle James said, that if you break one of those laws, we've broken all of those laws. And we can also see according to the Bible, which the Bible tells us, it says that what? We are not under law, but we are under what? We are not saved by, we are not, you know, we are not under the law. We are under grace. Can I read that to you? Romans chapter 6, 14 to 15. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Yeah. Let's stop there for a minute. Now, in the place where it was talking about the 613 laws, I want us to first understand, right, that all of what Moses wrote in the law was not all of God. No, not at all. Because there were some things that he said, God permitted it, but God eventually corrected it. Now, look at what the, Jesus said concerning those committing adultery. He said the reason why Moses gave you the permission do you see that? The reason why Moses gave you the permission was because your hearts were hardened. So now you can see that God allowed it. Yes, but was it the will of God? No, because in the book of Malachi, God corrected it. He says, I hate divorce. Do you see that dimension? So Moses permitted but God said, I hate it. That is why you can read where Apostle Paul wrote in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. He says, a woman must not separate from the man. Can you see? And the man must not divorce his wife. So you can see that Apostle Paul reiterated what God actually spoke in Malachi. I hate it. Completely. Do you see that? But Moses allowed it and God permitted it. So now look at what is happening all, all over creation. But Jesus gave us a way out. He said no one should divorce except for sexual immorality. So if sexual immorality happened, then you are allowed to. But if that did not happen, you are not allowed to divorce. So now you can see how Jesus corrected. Yes, what Moses spoke. He had to basically bring alignments to that. And Apostle Paul affirmed it. So you can see in the dimension of Apostle Paul, he said that what? He said, it is not I, but the Lord. Who spoke exactly what he spoke a man must not what divorce a wife must not separate then he said the next verse you can see where he said this is i not the lord so you can see that there were some times apostle paul just like moses was giving his own counsel to those counsels you have to take it before the lord to see whether it is of god or it is not because majority of us we take everything apostle paul said to be the word of the lord we take everything moses said to be the word of the lord we take everything apostle peter said to be the word of the lord whereas it is not right just in recent times i basically you know in one of the episodes that i basically shared you know i was helping us to understand videos sorry and i was helping us to understand that what that conscience did not begin with god it began with what it began with apostle paul the father didn't teach about it jesus didn't teach about it Holy Ghost never mentioned it. Apostle Paul brought about brought it about. And now we're all going by the revelation of Apostle Paul. But we have to understand. Let's check with the Father for a minute. Because in Jude, <laughs> Jude told us, he said, people, when they do not understand some things, what happened? They take it out and they begin to slander it. So now let's look at the word conscience. Because from that dimension, look at the definition of it. it is, it's a moral way of knowing between bad and good. Does that remind you of the scripture? In the garden of Eden, there was a tree planted and he said, do not touch the tree. Do not eat of the tree because I don't want you to know between good and evil. I want you to discern by the spirit. But it brought you into that realm after you ate it. Now you're able to know good and evil. And the reason for being sent out of the garden was eating it in the first place. Ha! So you can see the dimension of Apostle Paul again. So this is why I said we have to be careful with the Bible. So back up to what we're talking about, 613. And I said to each and every one of us, of all those 613, not all of them was of the Father. That is why you can look at the dimension of what? Deuteronomy chapter 28. And what did he say in Deuteronomy 28? This is very, very simple. 11 verses if you're obedient to God. 32 curses if you're not obedient to the Father. But how did the scripture begin? It says that what? If you do all that I, 
who is I, Moses, not God, not Holy Ghost. He said, what I, Moses, what I'm commanding you today, if you do this today, then all of these curses will not what? Come upon you. Do you see that dimension? So now we can take that scripture and say that is what God is saying. No, God permitted it. And the reason why God permitted it was because in Exodus chapter 3, he called Moses and he said, Moses, Moses, <laughs> I am making you God over Pharaoh. So God gave him that authority and that authority, yep, he walked in it. And though he didn't, he didn't get everything right, but yet he was what? The Lord honored it. So in the whole 613, I'm not here about 613 or 624, it's not about numbers. But what I'm helping us to understand is it was not everything that Moses spoke was of God. That is why God had to correct it through his prophets. Amen. So now look at what James is basically saying. Now, James is basically in a whole different dimension. And this is what James basically, James basically uh, took it a bit too far. And he said, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing right. But then when he went on in verse 10, he said, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at one point, at one just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. So now look at the guilt that who that James brought on each and every one of us he says if you break one you've broken all now I want to speak to those who basically always say that we are no longer under the law that we are under grace because all that's passed away and all things have become new because you know why a lot of people you know they tend to you know it's like they are being tossed to and fro and the reason why I share that the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those for those who are in Christ Jesus is because when God is calling us into some things and demanding from us a lot of times we basically go to <laughs> Jesus and like hey, Jesus has he said all oh, things are passed away all things have become new but when it's time and Jesus is demanding this they go back to God and they say hey well but God said this so you can see See the difference between that. Can I give you an example? Now, I believe I shared in recent times in the book of Leviticus where Jesus, where the Father is saying, I don't want tattoos. I, I don't want tattoos. Don't tattoo your body. Now you can see a lot of people are tattooing that in itself. And the reason sometimes when you speak to people that, hey, don't tattoo, the Lord doesn't like your tattoos. They basically go by what? They go by what Jesus is basically speaking. All things are passed away. We are no longer under the law. We are under grace. Can I share with you this scripture? It's a very beautiful scripture that some of us, we have to understand it with clarity. Yes, because when we understand this, we begin to understand the fullness of what Jesus came to do. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, 17 to 19, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappears, not the smallest letter, nor the least stroke of pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, I have come to fulfill it. Now, the reason for the fulfillment, can I help you to understand it? Because what Jesus did on the cross, that is why the Bible tells us in very simple terms that what? The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And the reason why it is because a lot of people don't understand yet what the fullness of what the message of the cross really is. Now, when Jesus said, I've come to fulfill them, when the law was written, it means that when you do something wrong, yes, the father said, let, let's look at it, for example, uh, uh, an example of what the father, right? So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 27. The Bible says, Moses and eld uh, the elders of Israel commanded the people, keep all these commands that I give you today. So he says, keep all these commands that I give you today. Now look at what he now began to say in verse 11. On the same day, Moses commanded the people, when you have crossed the Jordan, this tribe shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. Now you can see, it says in verse 14, the Levites shall recite to all the people in a loud voice, cursed is anyone who makes an idol. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is anyone who did not, look at all of that in itself. Look at what all of this was bringing.
seen it and manifested because the dimension started it was who Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people so the father basically honored it but then he corrected it because he says if you honor your mother you know your days shall be long on the earth but if you dishonor them there are consequences for it so there are consequences and the father is the one who brings the consequences that what that eventually manifests do you see that dimension but Moses had already declared all of these things but the father had to what come and correct majority of them so it's not all the 613 is from God some were established by Moses too so you can see why the Pharisees Jesus was trying to bring them out of that in itself trying to call them up higher and saying hey the Moses whom, whom you depend upon is the one who is going to judge you on that day because you know why he was helping them to understand that even Moses got some of these things wrong and I'm trying to show you the right way because I am the way the truth and the life because they were set upon the what the the laws of Moses can you see that but everything that God has said in the Bible that God said is what we ought to follow so you can see how majority of them was being passed on from prophets to priests priests to prophets prophets to the elders elders to the apostles because Jesus manifested this isn't it amazing what Jesus himself said he said I came to do what I see my father do what is the father doing some of the things that was written in what in the law which God himself said so if Jesus came to fulfill the law that is what you two came to do in the perfect law of liberty so does that mean we do away with the law no it is fulfilled because he says that when heaven and earth it will not pass away until every letter of that word is accomplished do you see that dimension so that means what God said under the old covenant is still in existence till today heaven and earth will pass by my word so you can see why the father says that what he says his word will not return to him void just like I was talking about tattoos so if God said it under the old we don't use Jesus. so now look at it this is why I was explaining a lot of people will go and get tattoos when God said don't now after they've gotten it they will come to the side of Jesus but Jesus said all things are passed away so now now let's look at it in this realm right so it is just like a child right so now the child you begin to see goes to the father I want some sweeties the father says no nope, I am not giving you sweeties not now no nope, no nope, don't ask me for sweeties I have said no so what does the child do go over to mommy mommy can I have some sweeties and mommy says yes <laughs> do you see that dimension so that is defying the father and trying to go through the mother to basically receive what they want that is exactly what majority of the people are doing so because the father said don't now they're looking to Jesus but Jesus said all oh, things have passed away so we are no longer under the law all of those things don't matter anymore because who I am in Christ is what is more important God does not look at my outer being he looks at my inner being because you know who I am on the inside I am Christ on the inside do not be mocked for God cannot be deceived your body is his temple and if your body is his temple he doesn't want it defiled amen <laughs> he doesn't want it defiled that is the same reason so you can begin to understand that is why it says incest I don't want it prostitution I don't want it all of these things I don't want it so when the father is basically declaring in this word don't 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 that is the one we ought to go by because a lot of people we are so good at following Jesus until Jesus begins to tell us to let some things go because the moment he begins to tell us to let some things go we are not willing to let them go no we want to hold on to those things can I share a word with you yeah I'm gonna we're gonna look at it together with absolute love I I, I love you all I, I you know I'm learning too so this is this is this is for all of us <laughs> no one is exempt from the Word of God now the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 35 and I'll start from verse 8 it says on the highway 
will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. And those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Now look at what the Father is speaking. It says, and a highway will be there. Can you see that? And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. Now look at what it says right after that. It says, it will be for those who walk on. It will be for those who walk on. It will be for those. That means even though the road is open to everybody, not everybody will be willing to walk in it. That's why I said, look at Jesus. I want to follow you, Jesus. You want to follow me? All right, let's go. Right, but can I go and bury my father first? Well, you know what? Your business is life. Let the dead bury the dead. You have no, you have nothing to do with that. You follow me because I'm all about life. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't follow you, Jesus. I still need to go and bury that person. Well, you're not ready to follow me. Now look at it. Another dimension. Hey, Jesus, how are you doing? I'm good. Hey, can I follow you? Yeah, come along, come along. Foxes have dance. <laughs> Birds have nests. But the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. Uh, uh, what you mean like i'm gonna we're gonna be sleeping here there like no place to okay bro i don't think i'm not ready to you know i have to have things in check i need to have my bank account in check i have to have my house in check i have to make sure everything is okay i have to be in that comfort place before i can follow you jesus and the lord is like really <laughs> you're willing to follow me isn't that why the apostle said we've left everything to follow you can you see that what what is there for us I've, apostle peter i've left my family to follow you you know i've just left my whole family to follow you what is in there for me and jesus said anyone who has left houses brothers mothers fathers look at the look at the very manifestation of what jesus was demanding he said if anyone who has left brothers fathers mothers you know for my sake will what will sit on the 12 thrones they will inherit in this life and then eternal life so you can see what the father the demand that god places on each and every one of us but are we ready willing to basically let go because for those who have walked in religion and coming out of it sometimes one of the most difficult things to do is letting go do you see that you can see why apostle paul wrote very clearly in his word i what i count everything as a loss to gain christ do you see that i count it all <laughs> i count it all as a loss in order to gain christ so what did he mean by i count everything as a loss let's look at the scripture can we read it together yeah we're going to look at it together philippians chapter 3 and verse 8 and this is what he says indeed i count everything as what as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing christ jesus my lord for this sake for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. So look at what Apostle Paul is helping, helping you to understand. I once looked upon material things. I count it as a loss. I once looked upon five-year plan, 10-year plan. I must have a plan. I count it as a loss. <laughs> I, I, I have to, you know, I'm basically looking to, I have to have everything in position and in check to follow Christ Jesus. I, I count it as a loss because you know why? I don't know the next step. I don't know what the next step is all about but you know what i am just going to follow him because he's asking me to what to follow him so you can see the dimension of what the following of our lord and our savior because when he begins to ask so look at it for example we looked at we looked at the dimension of uh, isaiah chapter 3 and where he was saying in zion you know you're going to do away with bangles perfume bottles all of those things so when the father is saying now i need you to stop putting makeup on your face i need you to look exactly how i called you to be now you can see i, I can't go out with that makeup how will people perceive me you know i need you to do away with that ring in your hand I, no, what ring oh no no i can't do away with that you know how am i gonna let i need you to do away with that with that mirror with all of those things what do you mean i have to do away with them you know i have to smell good i have to look good i have to do and the lord is like how i called you how i formed you you're beautiful enough as it is so you can see that what god said yes is still in manifestation today but because a lot of people are not willing to let go that is why that scripture begins to manifest all things have passed away i was saved by grace i was saved by grace not under the law i am no longer under the law but you have to understand 
that the word of the Father does not return to him void. If he spoke it, then he's still manifesting today. Because some of the things that he spoke, he corrected. And that which he has not spoken anything concerning is still a manifestation. For example, in the old covenant, we can see that they used to carry the Ark of Covenant, right? Yeah, they carried that Ark of Covenant very well. Yeah, they did. And that was to signify the presence of the Lord going before them. But what eventually happened? He told them in the book of Jeremiah, he said, one, he said very soon, he said that covenant box that they're carrying is going to be no more. So he spoke it. He brought it to an end. So isn't it amazing that God brought that to an end and yet people still preach about that? Yes, as what? The presence of God. You can still see in some sanctuaries that people will still carry that as a, as a sign of the presence of God. When God said in Jeremiah chapter 5 thereabout, he says, no longer shall this be spoken of anymore. Because that in which they are carrying, yes, he has done away with it because he has given us something new. And the new that he has given us is Christ Jesus. So through Christ, because he says that what in Galatians 2.20, he says that what? He says, I have been crucified with him. All things, can you see that? I have been crucified with him. It is I who no longer live. All things are passed away. And he says, it is what? It is Christ who now lives. All things have become new. Do you see that dimension? So when Christ came, he said that what? I did not come to do away with the law. No, 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 no. I came to fulfill it. So when he said, I came to fulfill them, this is helping to understand that it was fulfilled on the cross. So this is why majority of you, as you're walking in creation, you're fulfilling the will of the Father. You're bringing, yes, in reconciliation. So the consequences of what should have been is now what? Being received with mercy through Christ Jesus. So that's why I said, for example, you know, the Bible tells us that, hey, if you commit incest and all of these things, this is the judgment that comes concerning it. But now look at it. The father is now showing mercy through Christ Jesus. And he's saying now the consequences, yeah, the consequences are there, but I've given you my son. Yes. And I, through my son, I'm showing you mercy. And that is why a lot of people, when they believe in Jesus, it says you will not perish, but he will give you everlasting life. That means there is hope for reconciliation. There is hope for restoration. Institution. But a lot of people sometimes, they reject the reconciliation, they reject the restitution, and eventually the judgment which was spoken concerning that in the old covenant manifests in their life. So Jesus was the grace that was given to receive life concerning the punishment we deserved when we walked in it. Do you see that dimension? You see the beauty of the message of the cross? So yes, it's still there. Because you did it, you brought yourself under that judgment. So I want you to think about it this way, right? If somebody basically, now I want you to look at it. If somebody, so under the law, right? So like Apostle James, so James, Apostle James was speaking to us. If you look at it, it says that what? It says, for the whoever keeps the law, yes, and stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. The reason why I said that, why I said that is wrong is because now, if somebody commits robbery and then is charged to court, do they basically tell that person your charges is includes adultery? Your charges includes murder. Your charges includes, <laughs> can you see, auto theft? When asked, the person did not steal that? No, not at all. It is what they basically, the sin they committed is what they are being charged with. Not all of it. So it's not because, oh, the person went and they broke into a house. Therefore, all of the laws of that city, they have broken it. No, that is not, that is what Apostle, that is what John, James is trying to tell us here. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. This was what I was taught coming up. And they preached this. So you can see what Jesus said. Look at what Jesus said. For those who are preaching that in itself, it says that what? Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom. 
So anybody who is teaching this kind of things will be called least in the kingdom. So you can see why a lot of people are not manifesting the fullness of Christ because they keep saying that the law has been done away with. Can you see that? The law has been done away with. It has been done away with. You know, we are now under grace. That is why the people cannot come into the fullness of the manifestation. But then he, sees, he speaks to those who are actually still speaking concerning this. He says, whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven because Jesus did not come to do away with it. He did not come to abolish it. He came to fulfill it. And this is what we are here to do. That is why you can hear, like Apostle Paul was saying, he says, I have finished the good fight of faith. So you have to understand, yes, we are not under the law. We are under grace. And the reason why we are under grace is because the consequences of what the law should have brought upon us when we committed that sin. Yes. So think about it now. I remember there was a time, you know, the father was showing me somebody who was transgressing a while back, you know, in times past. And then eventually the Lord was saying, hey, okay, well, you might be it's like, when you basically, when you, when, when I showed you that in itself, you know, you didn't respond to the person, right? You judged the person. Can you see? And I'm like, Father, I'm so sorry. You know, I know, yeah, I know the person did it, but they've turned away from it. But you judged the person. You know, you basically you looked at the person based on the flesh. That was what the Father was speaking. And I'm like, Father, I am sorry that I did that. I shouldn't have judged the person in that manner because they've turned from it in itself. You know, but because of what the mother was still doing, yeah, there's still the consequences of that still stands. So now you can begin to understand. So because of what I did, the Father is like, hey, now I have to look to Jesus. Father, I am sorry for doing that. Please, you know, your mercy and help me to be better at it next time. And he took it, he took that away. So he can see that in itself because if that had happened without Christ Jesus, the consequences could have been totally different. So you see the beauty of what Jesus did, the message of the cross. So the message of the cross is helping us to understand the very beauty and the dimension of the holiness of God and saying to you that a lot of people, because of the consequences of these things, when God says, don't do it, don't do it. You can see why the father continues to go to those who are walking in wickedness. Go stay away from your wickedness. Stay away from your wickedness because I do not delight in any wicked, per per uh, in, you know, any wicked perishing, but because they refuse to give up their wickedness so he leaves them to the judgment he has already pronounced on those who are walking in wickedness so it is not the father who basically put them to death and say hey i strike you down it is the word that eventually came to pass in their lives and yes sometimes the father can do that he can bring them and, and bring them down completely he can he did it in the red sea because they refuse to give up so the, the giving up is basically father is rejoining his mercy and then the consequences of that manifest in the end. So you see the beauty of the word of God that the law, yes, is still in effect still today. That is why Apostle Peter wrote it perfectly. He is the perfect law of liberty. So through Christ, we're seeing the law in the perfect manner, how it ought to be. So it's not what everything, it's not everything Moses wrote that is of what? Is of law. It is what God said. So if you read the book of Exodus, you will receive God said. If you read the book of Leviticus, God said. If you read the book of Numbers, God said. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, God said. In the same books, you will read and Moses said, and Moses said, and Moses said. Now, this was what Jesus was trying to bring the Pharisees and the Sadducees out of from the consequences of those. But they chose the laws of Moses. So you can see, that's why Jesus said, I do not condemn you. It is not I, but the, mo the, the law of Moses in itself. Can we read that scripture so that we can better understand it in itself? So in the book of John and chapter five, verse 44, it says, how can you believe? How can you believe if you accept glory from one another? Yet do not seek the glory that comes from the only God. Do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, in whom you have put your hope. If you had believed Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. Do you see what he says? 
But since you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? So Jesus was helping us to understand that Moses spoke about the coming of Jesus because he said, and, and God will give you a prophet like me. So he said it. Do you see that? Moses spoke about the coming of Jesus. But now look at it. They basically, and Jesus is now here and he's trying to show them a better way so that he can deliver them from the consequences of the law. Yes, that was already in play, but they refused that. And he says, I'm not going to accuse you. Not at all. It is Moses who will basically stand to accuse you. And why will Moses accuse you? He will accuse you because you set your hope in what he was speaking. And I'm here trying to deliver you from some of the things that he spoke that was not of me. That is why this is happening even in creation today. Some of us, you know, it's a place where a leader can speak the wrong thing or can say the wrong thing. You know, perhaps the leader perhaps know that they, what they spoke is wrong, but yet because they have many people, yay, yes, my apostle is right. Ah, my prophet is right. My pastor is right. My pa Like the pastor can never be wrong. Oh, the teacher, the evangelist, they are right. They are always right. They are always right. That apostle is always right. That bishop is always right. They are always right. So you can see now, and Jesus said, I'm not going to be the one to accuse you. The person who you set your hope upon will be the one to accuse you. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? I am not the one going to accuse you because eventually that person, yes, when they are shown the wrong in which they did, can you see that dimension? They will have to come. Hey, I'm sorry for what I spoke. Now you can see. Now, how are you going to feel after they basically apologize and say, hey, I got that teaching wrong? <laughs> how are you now going to defend that in itself? So you can see what Jesus was trying to bring them out of. This is the same which I've been teaching concerning Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is beautiful. He wrote some beautiful and amazing revelation of the Father. But he's here with us. Yes, and some things that he spoke and they were wrong. He's trying to correct them through you. Can you see that? The same with Apostle James, like we're basically speaking here. He says, if you get one wrong, you've gotten all of it wrong. So you see that guilt that he has placed on people? So that's why some people feel guilty because, hey, wow, like, what if I had done that? What if I had done that? And the Lord is like, I'm trying to show you in the word. So when you look at the word concerning what God says, then you're able to walk in peace concerning the word of the Lord. Do you see that dimension? You're able to walk in peace. Now, let's look at Leviticus, for example. I want to look at Leviticus chapter 20. This is how you begin to understand that this is the Lord speaking. He says in Leviticus 20, the Lord said to Moses, do you see that? The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, any Israelite or any foreigner residing in Israel who sacrifices any of their children, yes, to Molech, is to be what? Is to be put to death. Do you see that? So it says the members of the community are to stone him. Now look at the very judgment that came concerning that. If they sacrifice any of their children to Molech, is to be put to death. Now, how many people in on earth nowadays are sacrificing their own children for money, for fame, for all of these things? Can you see that? Now, look at the judgment. It said anybody who does this is to be stoned to death. Now, because Christ is here, Christ went and preached to the person who basically did this. And the person repented of their ways. Can you see? Though they might go through the consequences of that, but they have been saved from death. Do you see that? Because the father says, anybody who does this, I will set my face against them. So you can see people who continue to what? Who continue to initiate their children to witchcraft, initiate their families to witchcraft, initiate their, you know, their boss without their knowledge. People, you will go to a place, they will just do things and initiate you without you knowing. They will initiate you to their occultic practices. Do you see what it says? It says that what? Anyone who does this, sacrifice them because that is what they're doing when they initiate. They are sacrificing you to their God. It said they are to be put to death. It says the members of the community are to stone him. He says, I myself, so people who do this, God has set his face against such people and he will cut them off. 
So that is why majority of the time, the father will raise a prophet, go and prophesy against what they are doing because I want to save them. For what they are doing, I want them to stop that behavior so that they can stop and turn from this wickedness so that I can give them hope of life. And when people don't do it, do you see what happened? They eventually choose death. This is why I said it is not the father who basically killed them in this aspect of the word that we're speaking, but it is they themselves because they came under the judgment of his word. So anybody who does this, God automatically sets his face against that person and he cuts them off because they did it. Can you see that? So he says, if any member of the community closes their eyes when that man sacrifices one of his children to Molech, and if, he fa and if they fail to put him to death, I myself will set myself against them. So you can see why sometimes I've been releasing words on, on here as the Lord is leading, because these people, they keep initiating, they keep initiating, trying to initiate, trying to initiate, and the Lord has been warning them and warning them. And the Father is saying, I showed you it, and I told you to prophesy against it. You are not prophesying against it. Now I will set my own face against you and your family. So I don't want God to set his face against me and my family. So I have to speak what he's saying. <laughs> Do you see that dimension in itself? So this is why the Lord, so you can see, that's why I said people who initiate their children. That was what I was sharing. You know, the father was saying, hey, you know, you judge that person wrongly. Yep, father, I did because they were working in prostitution and all of a sudden yeah, they've changed. Father, I repent of that in itself and I apologize for that, Lord. And for that reason, can you see what the father is saying? Because the mother has probably gone and done that. He said, I'm still setting my face against them. So this is the judgment that is still coming because of what the, ma the mother did. So you can begin to understand the principle of the word. I will set my face against him and his family and will cut them off from their people together with all who follow him in prostituting themselves. So because of that, he said, I'm setting my face against them and the people who follow them. So you can see why the Lord sometimes try to bring you out. So you can see these are the laws that we ought to what? We ought to pay attention to because it is the Lord who said to Moses. It is not Moses who is saying. He said the Lord said to Moses. Has he abolished this? No, it is still happening till today. And that's why Jesus gave us a better way. He said, I know you've seen these people. I know they are against you. Pray for them. Pray for those who persecute you and bless those who despitefully use you. So you can see how the Father is manifesting his word consistently. So when you pray for them so that you're not harboring anything against them, eventually when he removes you from it, then his justice is made manifest. But he warned them. So it's not that you want them dead, but that is his word. So you can see how I keep saying, you're not stumbling on all of them. No, it's just one. So that one is what you have, you know, the consequences of that one will eventually be dealt with. I remember my own journey, right? I want to share my own journey because I believe I've shared it here before. When I was working in, in immorality and all of those things, I, when I was working in it, you know, having sex here, no protection there and all of those things, I was doing all of those things and I was doing it and I thought I was getting away with it. And the Lord was like, ha ha, <laughs> my son, you know, where you're heading to, I didn't want to listen to that. And eventually what happened? I ended up with, I ended up, <laughs> you know, with a prostitute. I ended up with a witch. I ended up with all of these people. Now look at what eventually happened captivity now the father in his infinite mercy he now began to restore right one after the other you know many years ago having done this now began to reconcile began to reconcile and i said now you go and do a test and see how that comes out when i done it it was all clean it was all clear and i began to thank god he said now look at the people around you some people have died for the same thing some people have been made sick because of the same thing but he delivered me because it was all in ignorance and that is the mercy that he continues to show because because you are now in Christ Jesus. So just because you are in Christ does not mean, hey, you know, he's, shall we continue in sin because grace abounds? No, because now I, I, I understand the consequences. No, am I going to do that again? No, nah, not at all. Because you know why? I don't want to basically, <laughs> when he gives you somebody, eventually you don't want to be doing that to that person because that, you know, you're going out, where are you going? I'm going here, you know, and make sure you call me every five minutes. <laughs> do you want to be under that? No. So you have to discipline yourself. And that is what he's helping with in this hour and all the time and every hour.
with you, with myself, with every person who has been obedient to the Lord. Because you know why? All of what God spoke as God said for the punishment of sin still is a manifestation because it, through Christ, the sin has already been dealt with. But if you don't basically walk in the will, the consequences of that can still manifest if you're not obedient to what he's speaking. Do you see that? So now look at it. I want to show I want to show us another example because this might be something you witness every day. In the same Leviticus chapter 20, it says in verse 9, it says, anyone who curses their father or their mother is to be put to death because they curse their father or mother, their blood will be upon their own head. So you can see, for majority of you who has done this, I want to bless you with the mercy of God. Because you know why? The father is saying anybody who curses them is basically what? Has basically come under the judgment of death. But now, Look at through Christ Jesus. Now that you're in Christ, hey, you curse your mother there. Go and apologize. Nope, I am not going to. I said, go and apologize. Nope, I am not going to. I said, go and apologize. No, nope, I'm not going to. And eventually when the person sleeps, it is not God. They basically brought themselves under the judgment of what God has already spoken. So now, because we're now in Christ, you cursed her, you cursed him, Father, Daddy, I'm so sorry. Mommy, I'm so sorry. I cursed you. That was absolutely wrong. I repent of that, you know, and after you've apologized, now they get to bless you. And when they bless you, can you see? Now confessing your faults to one another, they pray for you. It says now your healing comes. So you can see that we don't come under that instantaneous judgment because Christ has taken it all. So he gives us the grace to restitute it and to reconcile it so that we don't come under that judgment anymore. So Christ is our way out because he's the way, the truth, and the life. But some people reject that way and eventually they go to sleep. So he's not come to do away with it. He came to fulfill it so that through Christ, we now see the law perfectly perfect law of liberty but that which moses was spoken was speaking with curses that in itself that is where you have to check with the father and like father <laughs> moses said this year is this something i need to take the father will be like stay away from that verse stay away from that verse don't go there don't go there don't don't basically don't go there prophesying about it don't go there teaching concerning it just stay away from it <laughs> do you see that dimension because it, it doesn't belong to you it was moses who spoke it so we don't come to abolish it we don't come to do away with it we come to fulfill it and just because god said ah that god sounds too strict under the old covenant i'm just going to go to jesus because he's much more he, he's much more cooler <laughs> Do you see that? It, Jesus seems much more cool. You know, I'm going to run to Jesus. Then eventually when Jesus is speaking something that is so strict, oh, I, I'm going to go to God. He, he seems more lenient. So, <laughs> to God be the glory, Lord have mercy. Do you see the beauty of it? So this is where the Father in his infinite mercy is bringing us into the what? Understanding of his word. Because a lot of us, we've fallen short. But the Father through Christ Jesus is reconciling us that we might come up higher. So you can see a lot of people should have thrived in their ministry. But the reason they could not thrive is because they have been telling a lot of people to do away with the law. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands, yes, do not, that's the command of God, and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom. Do you see why? There are many people that are not thriving because they keep saying, I'm no longer under the law, I'm under grace, I'm no longer under the law, I'm under grace. And he says, what then shall we say? Because, you know, if we continue to sin, because we're not under the law, but under grace, you know, should we continue to sin? God forbid. Yes, the law is still in effect. God, Jesus did not come to do away with it. Because if the, Jesus came to do away with it, then he would tell you there is no reason for the old covenant anymore. Let's just cancel it, boom, and let's stay with the new covenant. But you have a new covenant with the Father now. So all of these things that he has spoken in the, in the old covenant, he has hidden it in your heart and is writing it on your mind. He's writing it in, not on. He's writing it in your mind. So now that he's writing it in your mind is where you begin to understand, Father, you don't like this. I, oh, Father, you know, I'm, I'm speaking this that I'm saying. I'm not literally 
Lord, help me to understand it. All right, let's go over to the to the old covenant and look at what I said concerning it there. Yes, Lord. And you go over with the Father and he shows you this is what you should have done. And in this in itself, you understand it better. Do you see that dimension? He doesn't want any of you to perish. We understand what Jesus has done, but we don't take God for granted. That is why you can see, it says God cannot be mocked. And that's why you can also see, I am God and I change it not. He doesn't change. He didn't change from old covenant. No, just because Christ came means God has changed. Nah, he didn't change. He's still the same. He's the same today and forevermore. <laughs> Do you see that? He's the same beautiful father. He's the same glorious father. He's the same wonderful God. He's the same blessed God. He's the same amazing father. He's the same Lord Jesus yesterday today and forever jesus changes no he's beautiful he's amazing he's glorious as ever he's the same yesterday today forever he's alpha he's omega beginning and the end he's the first and the last the first fruits <laughs> of those who resurrected yes can you see that dimension yes that is our lord and our savior so you can begin to understand Isaiah 35 is all about holiness. It will be for those. So when the Father begins to help you to understand that this is the work I am calling you to, not everybody is able to walk in it, even though everybody has been given the permission to do so. So when the Lord is taking you higher, not everybody wants to go higher. So that is why the Father will honor people for exactly where they need to be. But there is a dimension in God where the holiness of the Father. Do you know, can I explain to you the holiness of God? The holiness of God. I, I want to share this, you know, with each and every one of us. Because I remember there was a time, right? Uh, there was uh, somebody that I was working with, and I believe I've shared it here before. Yeah, the person the person was, uh, 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 she was a prostitute, and I didn't know she was a prostitute at that moment in time, you know. And it was a place where the person tried to invite me to go for a, 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 a couple's retreat. And I said, no, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not going. And the person tried to encourage me to go, and I said, no. I am not going. Do you see that? And I didn't understand why I was saying no then. But then eventually it made sense because of her dimension of witchcraft and prostitution. And in that same manner, while I was basically saying no to that, I remember I went to a sanctuary. And in that sanctuary, I walked in. And it was a place where there was this lady there, you know, and I believe they were about to move. And after prayer meeting, the Lord said, prophesy to that person. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do just that. So upon speaking to her, I was about, as I basically approached her, because we, we were there, we finished, and I decided to approach her. And as soon as I approached her, she fell backwards. And I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> because at that moment, I was going through so, so much warfare. And I'm like, are you okay? And the person said, yes, I'm okay. You know, I'm good. He said, the presence of God that is on you is so strong. And I'm like, wow. And the Lord was helping me to understand this is what my holiness is all about. Because the Bible says, at the mention of your name, every knee bows. Because even in your presence, not everybody is able to come in. So you can see why you understand. a lot of us, we can invite anybody into our presence, not understanding that not everybody can be in your presence because of the holiness of the Father. Do you see that dimension? I also remember, I want to share this in light, because I remember there was a day I was at a train station. And, um, you know, I, I believe I had just 10 pounds in my account. That was all I had <laughs> many, maybe about a couple of years ago. And that was all I had in my account. And I was trying to get home. I had ticket to get home. And all of a sudden, as I was standing in the corner, somebody came running to me for, you know, from nowhere. I just saw the person appear in my front and I'm like, hello, how are you doing? He said, I'm okay. He said, please, can I have 10 pounds? And I'm like, 10, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I thought he would probably ask for something less. He was asking for the exact amount that was in my account. And I, he said, yeah, can I please have 10 pounds? I need to get to where I'm going and things like that. And I'm like, really? Are you, <laughs> you know? I was about to say no, but I was like, no, this is this is a holy moment. This is a holy moment. So I said, okay, come with me. So I went to the cash point. I took the money out and I gave it to him. And I said, God bless you. And as the man was running away, he said one thing. And that basically stuck, you know, I could, I can still remember that till today, many years ago. And he said to me, I will see you in heaven. And then he went away. 
I never saw him again. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what a word. <laughs> what? The, you know, like he knew I, I was, it was like I was standing there and I was just waiting. Like he probably knew I was waiting for a word or I needed a word from the Lord or something. And immediately he said, I said, I will see you in heaven. And that was, that was it. He was gone. And I'm like, father, that's amazing. And I was so joyful. And I'm like, wow, for all that I'm going through that in itself, Lord, thank you. If that is all the word I got today, I am blessed by you. Do you see that dimension? So you can see for majority of you. That is why I said, we are not under. Yes, we are still, the law is still manifested, but through Christ, yes, through Christ, it is being fulfilled because of the holiness. Can you see that? Isaiah 35, not everyone can walk in that in itself because of the demands that Christ places on us. Because for some of us, we might look at that money I don't know why I'm sharing this, but I'm just encouraged to help us to understand, you know, because for some of us, we're looking like, oh, this is all I have left. How am I going to be able to eat at night? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And the Lord is just saying, trust me. All I need you to do is just trust me. All I need you to do is just trust me. Don't look at the circumstances of what you have, what you have left. That was what the widow basically was saying to Elijah. All I have is this handful of flour and this oil and we'll make it for me and my son and we're going to die. And what did Elijah do? Elijah said, go and make some for me first <laughs> and eat what is left because this is what the Lord, yes. So you can see the beauty of the command of God. It's just about obedience, basically. It's all about obedience. So you can see the beauty of it in itself. That's what the Lord, don't look at the circumstances. Just believe my word. So the father, is he still speaking from the old covenant? Yes, he is. He has not changed. So we have to continue to look at what they spoke concerning the old. We have to look at that, what God said in the old that is still here today. So the old has not, yes, the old has passed away, but yet he says, I did not come to do away with it. I came to fulfill it. So for those who are teaching that word, that we are no longer under the law yes the law of the father we're still there the one that moses wrote that's the one we have to be wary of so 613 part of that is for moses is not all of god <laughs> amen so some of that is for moses not every one of it is of the father so this is why you have to what learn how to read the bible to understand which one belongs to you and which one does not so for that reason is why I want to say to each and every one of you, I love you very much. You all are amazing. You are the blessedness of the Father. You are the glory of the Father. And I honor you all in Jesus' mighty name. So stay blessed. Yes. And until we're here again, the Lord bless you. I bless every dimension. So for what I've spoken here, if any of you have walked in that, I want to bless you with the mercy of God. And I bless you with life in its place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. I love you. Stay blessed.